فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam it is important for us to be conscious of Allah our maker سبحانه وتعالى He who made us is he whom we shall be returning to He has given us a short space of time on earth in order to earn his mercy so that we can enter into his paradise and he has set for us a beautiful example in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wherein we draw from beautiful lessons and instruction and we derive from it the method of worship that Allah has chosen for himself subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore i advise yourselves and myself to fulfill your duty unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ensure that you understand the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you and I. I wish today to address a very important matter. And I will start off by speaking about an organ within the body that has no bone. In fact, it is very complicated. It is filled with muscle. It is filled with blood. And it is considered a piece of flesh as per the hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir radiyallahu anhu in Sahih Muslim. He says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us. And then he goes on to make mention of quite a few things. And at the end of that narration he says that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ لَمُضْغَةِ إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ Indeed, behold, in this body there is a piece of flesh. If it is pure and good, the entire body will be pure and good. And if it is corrupt and filled with sickness, then the entire body shall be corrupted and filled with sickness. What is the organ? He says, behold, it is the heart. My brothers and sisters, let us all ponder today over the condition of our heart. You know that when a person is sick medically, they do what is known as a blood test in order to verify what exactly the sickness is. And that will determine the precise levels of the minerals, the vitamins, the sickness, the disease, whatever it may be, the sugar, etc. in your body. Let me tell you that the same heart is checked when it comes to the spiritual sicknesses of the body. We sometimes tend to love that which we are supposed to love within limits in an unlimited way. For example, wealth. It is normal to have an inclination towards wealth. We all like to have nice things. We all would love to have a beautiful conveyance and a lovely home. But remember, part of earning paradise is to be able to achieve what you like on earth in a way that does not contradict what Allah wants from you. So you can earn, but in a halal way, in a pure way, do not eat from one another by means of oppression and robbery. And this is why we say if a person's love for wealth is such that he ignores the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that love is wrong. If a person's love for 
anything material, say for example for the opposite sex, if it is such that it goes against the teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that person is not well spiritually. They deserve or they need to be cured just like we have an antibiotic that would perhaps combat the bacteria in the body. We need to return back to the Quran and the Sunnah in order to combat the spiritual maladies. Now I wish to move further with a very, very important point. My brothers, my sisters, we are bleeding today in the Ummah because we do not love one another. It is a very major disaster that we are facing. Ask yourself today, have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart and ask yourself, do I love those who are seated next to me? Do I love those members of the ummah, my brothers and sisters, solely for the sake of Allah? Or is my heart filled with hatred against someone? It is such that the filth of hatred can overtake us in a way that we will damage the entire ummah without even realizing. Take a look at all of the problems on the globe today that the ummah is facing you will find that it goes back to a disease and the sickness of the heart. If we have a problem with one another, we are taught with love to rectify the matter. We are taught to be genuine. If I have seen you doing something bad, the worst thing would be to publicize it on Facebook and on Instagram and Snapchat and what have you without solving the problem. When I have a problem with you, Wallahi, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught me, number one, to make dua. Number two, when I say make dua, I mean to supplicate for you. Number two is to be able to reach out to you in a beautiful way. My brother, I noticed this. My sister, I noticed this. I may be wrong. Please, can we clarify this matter? Can we sort this issue out between us behind closed doors? We don't want to create a disaster out in the ummah to let the rest of the people think that the two of us are fighting. No, we are not supposed to do that. If you care for Allah and His Rasul, and if you care for the Day of Judgment, you will resolve your matters in a beautiful way, amicable, so that you can set an example for the rest of the ummah. We are one family. We actually are brothers and sisters no matter where we dwell on the face of the earth. And we need to understand the matters we have and the disputes we have between us. We resolve them with a clean heart. It is only when one wants to prove that he is right and everyone else is wrong that the heart becomes contaminated with the self-conceitedness and the heart becomes con contaminated in a way that they will not be able to resolve the problem. My brothers and sisters, remember, the Prophet ﷺ speaks about love for the sake of Allah. And he says how important it is. So important that there is hadith known as hadith al sabha the hadith of the seven. Who are the seven? Seven categories of people who will be granted a special shade on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that there are seven people who are the VIPs on the day of judgment. They will be given the shade of Allah that day when no other shade will be there and it will be desperately needed. From among them, Rajulani tahabba fillahi, ijtama'a alayhi wa tafarraqa alayhi. Subhanallah, those two who loved each other for the sake of Allah, there was love between them. And the example is given of two, it includes male and female, and it includes more than two. In fact, the encouragement is for all, because my brothers and sisters remember, the solutions to the problems we have, they don't start with the man you have the problem with. No, or the sister you have the problem with, they start with you. That's what it is. When I have a problem, it is me who that problem starts with. Not the person I have it, he is the second party. So first I need to rectify myself. This is why Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah will not change the condition of a nation until each individual changes himself or herself. 
When I think I want to contribute to my nation, let me not be corrupt. Let me be the proper leader. Let me be the proper citizen. Let me be the proper contributor. That is when I will be able to resolve the matters of the nation. Subhanallah. A nation will never be successful when the buck is passed on to the other, each one pointing at the other, blaming the other for the problem. That will never ever resolve the matter. The matter is resolved when we all take it upon ourselves. I will not do that which is wrong. I am going to contribute. What have I done? What am I doing? That is the way it should be. It shows cleanliness of the heart. My brothers and sisters, these two who love each other for the sake of Allah, they gather in the love of Allah, and when they disperse, they are dispersing within the love of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I meet you, I love you for the sake of Allah. Even though I don't know you personally, there is no condition that I need to know you personally. Why are we here today? We are here in order to fulfill our duty unto Allah. We are here in order to listen to something uplifting that can perhaps bring us closer to Allah. We are here in order to become better people so that when the others see us and interact with us, they recognize immediately these people are perhaps the best of the people you can have. Why is it that the Muslim Ummah is struggling today where some of us, when people interact with us, they don't even want to deal with us anymore. They don't even want to talk to us anymore. They will spread across the others that don't deal with this man. He is not honest. Why should that happen? We are ambassadors of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm sure we can change that. I'm sure we can do better, my brothers and sisters. It's the heart. It's the heart. Learn to love for your brother what you love for yourself. That is not easy until you have cleansed your heart. Remember, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. None of you are true believers until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. My brothers and sisters, how many of us are guilty of not loving for one another even the peace that we have? Subhanallah. Did you know that after your iman, one of the biggest gifts that Allah has given you is peace, stability, security. It is something great. Please preserve it. Please make sure that you never do anything to disturb the peace in your surroundings. Never let someone brainwash you to think that the solution of a problem you may have is through violence. Because it is not, my brothers and sisters, remember that. Look at the world. Take a look at wherever there is violence. Has it solved the problem or has it made a bigger problem in the ummah? Why is it that we allow little differences amongst us to make us get to the level where we start thinking of harming someone physically? How can that happen? That is prohibited in the Sharia. We love one another. Like I said at the beginning, you have a problem. You will sit if it means one time, 20 times, 100 times, but you will not harm a, another. You will not harm the dignity and the, and the honor of another, let alone physical harm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. It goes back to the heart. Learn to love one another. Why does Allah say that when you love one another, you will get Jannatul Firdaus? Why does He say that? He says it because it is very difficult to do that. That's why. If it was something simple, the reward would also be simple. But when Allah says, love one another, you are my VIP on the day of judgment, you need to know that's not an easy task. It is something very difficult. I need to give up my opinion sometimes because I want the broader benefit of the Ummah. Sometimes I need to tolerate something. I need to respect the difference sometimes because I want the broader benefit. It's not about me, it's about us. Remember that. My brothers and sisters, we are an Ummah facing crisis. We are an Ummah whom some are trying to brainwash our children into believing that the solutions of our problems are through violence and through harming the other and attacking only to create more violence in such a way that it returns to us with total destruction. Never allow this to happen. It is our duty as ulama to use the minbar on a Friday to educate the masses for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the beautiful message of Islam and the diversity that it honors and respects. Subhanallah. I will not be able to think like you exactly. And you will not be able to think like me exactly. We might not be exactly on the same level of many matters. But wallahi, there should be no love lost. Why? 
because you are answerable to Allah. I am answerable to Allah. We will continue educating each other. We will continue discussing with each other, but in a respectable manner. We are not animals. We are human beings. Allah has blessed us with the best posture. لَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ Indeed, we have created man in the best possible posture. The best of postures. Starting with the brain, Allah has given us, it's the best brain, subhanallah, subhanallah. Use it, my brothers and sisters. And have you realized in the Quran, the connection between the brain and the heart is such that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the term, the heart, they do not think with it, subhanallah. لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا Allah Akbar. Allah says, they have hearts through which they don't even understand. One might say, why does Allah say you understand through the heart? Because my brothers and sisters, the connection between the heart and the mind is so strong that when you have a disease of the heart, it affects the way you think. It affects the way you think. Learn to love one another. And this I'm talking of within the ummah to start with. Learn to love one another, learn to greet one another. Allah adullukum, ala amrin idha fa'altumuhu ta'ababtum. Afshu salama baynakum. We all believe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets. Do you know what he says? Should I not show you something? If you were to do it correctly, it would spread love amongst you. Now, someone might think he needs to give half an hour lecture, 45 minute talk. No, one sentence. Afshu salama baynakum. Spread the true salam amongst yourselves. I greet you and I know the meaning of the greeting and I live by the meaning of the greeting. The hadith says it will spread love. When I say assalamu alaikum, it means I will not harm you. What did I say? I said we don't harm one another. We never touch one another physically with bad intent. No. We say assalamu alaikum, it means peace be upon you. If I tell you, may peace be upon you, I am telling you that I guarantee you I won't harm you. You are my brother, you are my sister. Why do we not even greet each other? My brothers and sisters, we are selective in the greeting. Let's learn to greet one another. It is the instruction of your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, greet one another, beautiful greeting, and mean it in your heart. This is why a hypocrite is he or she who greets you but stabs you behind your back. That is not what we want. Someone who smiles at you and only after they turn around you find out these were just dentures, they were plastic, they fell off. May Allah forgive us. We need to smile genuinely. We need to smile with one another because smiling is a sadaqa. Why is it a sadaqa? Yesterday, I saw a clip that someone sent to me on my phone of a man on a train in a non-Muslim country. They were doing a study and he started laughing, looking at his iPad. And he was laughing and he continued to laugh and he laughed louder and louder until everyone on the whole train began to laugh. They were laughing at him laughing. And the point is how contagious it is. If you see a man sitting in the corner laughing and laughing, the other people start to laugh. When you see everyone laughing, you all laugh. It is contagious. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, we were taught something similar by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about a smile. When you smile at people, it shows the cleanliness of your heart. And you are helping them. They might be depressed because of a problem they may have had during the day. Your smile can solve a lot of the diseases that you have and others have. It shows genuineness. I smile. Today many of us are frowning, not realizing that. Wallahi, an act of sadaqah. Not every, of, every one of us can afford so much. But an act of charity. It's just a smile. Your expression. Show us those teeth, my brothers and sisters, subhanallah, and you will be earning a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the issue of loving one another and cleansing the heart is absolutely important. Another very interesting aspect of the heart is a disease known as jealousy. We become jealous when one has achieved, yet that was in the hands of Allah, a rich man who gave him his richness. It is Allah. So when we become jealous of Him, we are actually jealous of the distribution of Allah. A man amongst us, for example, he may be propelled into position of authority. Wallahi, it is a big responsibility. 
Don't become jealous. Rather make dua. Oh Allah, what a person. He has authority. Make it easy for him. Guide him to the correct decisions. That is the true quality of a mu'min. Rather than becoming jealous and saying bad words. For what? It shows a disease of the heart. You do not or you are actually reducing the chances of you entering into Jannah with ease because of your heart. So become happy at the happiness of others. Don't become sad at the success of another person. In the classroom, for example, one person comes out first. The others have to come out second, third, and the order continues. Not everyone can be first. When we are jealous of that person, it will not help us in our studies. In fact, it will destroy us. Inna al-hasada ya'kulu al-hasanat. The hadith says, Jealousy eats away at your good deeds. The same way that the fire will consume the dry logs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So we need to clean the heart. My brothers and sisters, there are so many diseases of the heart. We have jealousy. We have envy. We have selfishness. Selfishness means whenever there is something good, we want it for ourselves alone. Whereas the hadith speaks of ithar. Do you know if you look at why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved the Ansar so much? Because Allah says, وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا They gave preference to others over themselves even though they were in desperate need of what they gave away. Subhanallah, you are desperately in need of this, but you gave it away to someone else because they needed it more than you. Many of us, even if we were not in need of something, we would make sure it did not go to someone else. Why? Because that's how I am. No! If you want to clean your heart and you would like Jannah and you want the love of Allah, learn to share what you have. Learn to reach out to people. Give them preference over your own self and you will find your heart will become clean. You will learn to love the, the people around you. Now let me spend a moment talking about the non-Muslims who are around us. My brothers and sisters, many of us, if not all of us, myself included, perhaps our forefathers somewhere, they were not Muslim. What happened? Someone made an effort on them. Someone came to talk to them, to spread with them, to do a deal with them, perhaps to interact with them. Somehow, mashallah, because of that interaction, we came on to the deal. Because someone was concerned. If the teaching of Islam, if the teaching of Islam was that we must separate ourselves and attack these people and sometimes astaghfirullah, some people actually say you must just kill them, astaghfirullah. How can that ever be a teaching of Islam when we ourselves were not Muslim a few generations back and in some cases in our own lives? How can that be a teaching of Islam? Your duty is to go out and to ensure that your interaction with those who are not Muslim is so beautiful that they see the light of Islam. Allah is the one who will guide. But Allah uses us at least to light that candle. Subhanallah. What is the minimum benefit? The minimum benefit is the one who dislikes Islam and the Muslims and hates us with a passion at least in his heart, he will have to acknowledge that no, these people are actually good. Even if he doesn't accept Islam. But in Arabic, they say, تَخْفِيفُ عَدَاوَةِ الْعَدُو Which means to reduce the enmity of the enemy. It's a big success. A person who wanted to harm you every day, now that you interacted with them, they no longer want to harm you because they realize you are a good man. They might not accept your faith. Have you not succeeded? You have succeeded in a big way. Guidance is in the hands of Allah. But what you did, you delivered the duty on your shoulders in the correct way. So therefore, I call on all of us to reach out to the non-Muslims in the most beautiful way. When we interact with them, when we deal with them, with honesty, with dignity, with beautiful words, with great character and conduct. Look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How did he reach out to them? Wallahi, through the best. I don't have time to go through all those examples, but I promise you, it is worth mentioning. My brothers and sisters, it is important for us to cleanse this heart. Remember the Prophet says, Wallahi, la an yahdi Allahu bika rajulan wahida, khayrun laka min humurin na'an. 
Wallahi, if Allah has used you to guide one person, it is better than humur al naam which is the most expensive of conveyance at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the red camel. So my brothers and sisters, I hope we can all look into our hearts and I hope that we can all clean it. We can learn to love one another, get along with one another. Remember, it's not about me, it's about us. Remember, it is about the ummah. Remember, it is about humanity at large. Humanity is craving at the moment for some form of sanity because there is so much of insanity across the globe. Things we don't understand. People are killing each other for no reason. The person, and it's a prediction of the Prophet ﷺ, who is being killed does not know why he is being killed. And the one who is the killer doesn't even know why he is killing. It's happening on the globe, Allah. We pray for peace and stability across the globe. And I pray that these few words can help us all to become better citizens of our nation and to help us all to become better ummatis of Muhammad ﷺ. And help us rectify the problems we have in our own small lives in a way that as a result the entire ummah can benefit. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه جواد كريم.